Hello everyone, uh, this is Dr. Shijun Wang. Uh, in today's video, I am going to talk about how to uh, find out or how to see if your piano teacher is the best fit for you. Um, and of course, this is a little bit uncomfortable, it's a little sensitive for me to talk about since I am a piano teacher myself. Um, but <laughs> if I think about my uh, journey of learning music, of studying piano. I mean, I started since when I was four, and now I'm 30 years of being a student almost. Uh, but then only I started teaching in college since six years ago. Um, so I still spend the majority of my time being a student. Yeah, I only stopped uh, when I was uh, graduating uh, from Eastman, that was uh, six years ago. 2015 so still um, I was 25 years of being a piano student um, the reason I really picked this topic is because many people have sent me private messages asking about if my current teacher is a good fit or like can you teach me lessons or anything about you know learning piano it, it, again a good piano teacher can really make a huge difference um, so I have really cataloged this into three different stages right obviously um, you don't study with one teacher when you were four and then go all the way to your DMA study studying with the same teacher right I can give you only one example if Genny Kissens professor who really recently passed away but from what I heard she taught him when he was really young until right like the later you know she had like amazing career but he just stuck with this one teacher um, and that's really I think a very very rare uh, case um, so the first stage of, of piano teachers are um, you know when a a child start to have piano lessons. I started at age four and I think that's a little early but most kids start at age five or six um, and maybe from age five until about 10 years old, 11 years old, this is like the early education part. Um, and a good teacher for developing a child with like musical ideas, with reading music, um, and also um, with you know reading the clefs, knowing the rhythmic pattern, uh, knowing some basic music theories, and the most important thing about teaching this stage, it's so that you're constantly developing, nurturing the students to love music, to love playing the piano, right? So the kind of old image of uh, mean uh, Asian teachers or like Soviet teachers who, if you don't do what they say, they bang you on the hand. Uh, I don't think that's really a healthy way of developing a child. I mean, if you can't develop them to love something by beating them. Um, so like I can share with you guys like my wife she is a PhD in statistics but she remembers she learned three years four years of piano when she was young it's like a horror dream for her it's like a nightmare every time she mentions she's just like hatred it's like this resentment of how she had nothing like she was always sick after piano lessons and like physically feeling sick um, so I guess that's a terrible <laughs> teacher to begin her education and I don't know how much I, tr I have to try harder but uh, I, I guess if I practice enough or if I do good music enough she might really reverse this opinion of, <laughs> of piano but really I think that's the worst failure for a piano teacher to leave a child with that kind of <laughs> image when even when they grow up they still hate that thing um, and of course one important thing is also um, to use the kids language to teach kids yeah um, 
it's really not nothing like to teach an adult student or a college student. You can lecture to them, you can share with them some stories, you can share with them a book you, you've read, you can share the, with them like some inspiring, inspiring ideas. But for, for, for children, you have to really teach them in a different language. Um, and also you have to teach them not only by language, right? If you want them to feel a rhythm, right? You have to tap dance, you have to, you know, move the body um, and you have to use the visual aspect to do the, you have to, you of course, make them hearing stuff. You have to make them feel stuff. Uh, and you have to probably feel the whole rhythm thing with like marching around the, the classroom whatever you do but don't be lecturing the student for 30 minutes they will not focus they will not learn the same way as older kids this next level is probably from early advanced to like advanced students probably high schooler or from uh, junior high to high school um, and and in this uh, stage um, a good teacher will first of all share with the student the style of the piece the style of the composer the style of this time period right the articulation of Bach and the articulation of Chopin of course is different um, and also to have start teaching the student the taste yeah you don't do the same way of rubato if you're playing Chopin and then you don't do the same way if you're playing second movement of Mozart right uh, the staccato for a Mozart sonata of course is so different from a staccato uh, in a Prokofiev piece you know things like this articulation and then the phrasing you know all of these is never too early to teach once the student can understand you know that's something as basic as learning notes and rhythm um, and of course the development of technique um, and with this kind of Asian training background where the foundation the technical foundation was so greatly emphasized I think that is to a certain extent overrated uh, it's almost like a religion you're an Asian you must spend 10,000 hours practicing journey that's why your finger moves so fast um, I don't think it's totally fair and also I don't think it's totally necessary yeah you know, the other day I was you know, playing some pickleball in the park uh, and I think I was wearing a Juilliard hat, so my opponent, who was a graduate from Utah, uh, University of Utah, as a piano major, and he was really bitter about about that. He said, "Oh, you know, I have to change to be a computer uh, engineer because I didn't practice journey when I was in kindergarten." Um, and I was like, "I didn't practice journey when I was in kindergarten." Uh, a lot of the techniques I figured out, uh, not with journey, but you know, after I learned Chopin etudes when I was, you know, in my college, in my graduate studies. Um, this early training of the fingers in, I guess, Asian, in, especially in, in the Chinese tradition, um, it also developed a million of bad things, you know, to name a few. Um, the the touch is always hard. Yeah. If you and then the sound is always harsh, and always you lift fingers and you see so many pianists from Asian background training that they they always lift the fingers, and that's not always necessary. Um, this basically a pillar of beautiful tone if you always lift your fingers, um, and and also um, this will make you finger move automatically without thinking of what you actually need musically okay so many uh, cases when I'm teaching uh, Chinese students or uh, students with this kind of training background like they're moving their fingers but they're not thinking of anything they don't know what they really want to achieve in terms of the sound um, so 
I guess it's not the end of the world if you did not train your fingers the way the Asians did, or I guess the Russians did. Um, it's never too late to figure out how to use your hands. Okay, and uh, to just a little bit of <laughs> things outside of this topic, we say we use hands to play the piano, but most of the time we actually use our wrist and forearm and the whole body, not just the fingering, not just the fingers. Yeah. Um, so, anyways, um, so if in this time period, junior high, high school, if the teacher can really help you to develop a healthy uh, technique, then that's a good teacher. And of course, the next level is when you basically are yeah, trying to go for a conservatory or to become a piano major, then you're professional already. Yeah, you might not have a professional performing career yet, but you're already professional. Um, and in this case, um, you want your teacher to at least can play or used to play the pieces they're teaching you. Um, I say this because, you know, a lot of times a professor would teach you something that sounds fine, but it's not practical. Yeah, because they or he or she haven't tried on stage yet. Um, and, and of course, if you're studying with a 90 years old, old professor who has so many famous students, that's different, right? You can't expect uh, a 90 year old to run as fast as a 20 year old and not to mention to focus for like an hour and a half and playing that they don't have the stamina, their, their body is decaying. But if a student, if a professor giving up performing when they're 30, then, you know, maybe it's because they don't love this enough, <laughs> maybe because they don't want to work hard enough. Um, but of course, it's a problem if your teacher is always away performing. Um, <laughs> I had sometimes that uh, problem when I was at Juilliard, just like my teacher is in Europe performing. Um, and it's, in one hand, a nice thing because that starts you, uh, it starts you early on developing, you know, learning something on your own. But of course, when that traveling happens before your audition or before your important concert, it's really frustrating. Um, but I think in any stages, a good teacher will uh, have some uh, things in them yeah, that can, can make them a good teacher. Number one, they have to have an open mind. Yeah, this really, uh, you know, in, in many aspects, yeah, in terms of composer and pieces, yeah, they can't just say, I hate contemporary music, right? I mean, you can say that if you know every single piece of contemporary music, but a lot of people don't like something because they don't know something, right? <laughs> Whereas some people say, I hate Rachmaninoff. Yeah, I've heard of, you know, quite famous musicians who say, oh, Rachmaninoff is just sugar water, right? There's no nutrition in them. Uh, well, wait for the students to discover it on, them, on their own. Don't have your own opinion or bias to influence the student. And also, a lot of teachers will be like, oh, don't uh, study with other professor. Don't take lessons with other professor. Uh, you're my student. And I, I think that is just wrong um, because student is not your own property. You, you're there to help the student to be a better musician. You, you're probably just one of the stops, you know, along the way for the student's musical path. So if a professor is really open, it shows first they're confident and second they, they know the game, they know that everyone is limited within his or her own abilities. You know, I'm really good at something, but I'm not as excellent as some other aspects or some other composers. Then let your student studying this with other people in summer festivals, in other camps. Um, and, and also, 
um, one thing that strikes me as the most important identity of a good teacher that is to always put the benefit of your student ahead of you yeah you're there to serve the students to help them as much as you can and of course sometimes uh, the goal for the student are the same as the goal for you right if you teach a student who wins a big competition yes the glory is to the student but also to the professor but sometimes you might see a student using the same repertoire for many many years right you know I always have a problem with that when I see that happen um, because you know if you play something for four years of course you have less chance to make mistakes than if you play a brand new piece but if your professor always asks you to not change piece to play the same piece over and over um, I don't think this teacher is really putting your uh, interest at the pro at priority um, because you might end up winning a thing or two but then you spend four years only playing one hour of music uh, not learning more things I would really feel more comfortable to give my students different repertoires especially when they're in their undergraduate studies they need to be exposed with as much composer styles as much as pieces possible um, so always put the interest of the student ahead of, of the professor themselves I think that's one thing um, you have to be really careful when you're choosing a professor okay um, so this is probably the first video I've shot in, in since like August when I uh, stopped <laughs> uploading videos uh, I have been really busy uh, dealing with you know the school opening and I now everything moved from virtual online to face to face um, and also I have a recital coming in three weeks so I'm busy preparing <laughs> uh, if I have two hours to practice one day that's that's lucky so I have to really grab every second I have uh, to 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 practice and prepare for my recital so for the next couple of weeks I probably will not update as often as I used to and probably I will not start a new series on certain pieces uh, I probably will just do like some basic ideas some uh, special topics like today here and there um, thank you for watching I really miss communicating with my audience and I hope uh, I will start resume my regular upda uh, uh, update uh, loads uh, in early November after my faculty recital. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon.